Welcome back to this ENCA Moneyline special on Captains of Industry. We're speaking to Nungulego Koboto. So when you look today, and we lament this every year when Saika releases the numbers mm. and we have to do the breakdown. Mm. I know people question the need to do the breakdown, but I think because of the enormity of what you achieved, what mm. Wiseman Kutlu achieved, we still have to continue to do that bean counting of yes. how many this and how many that. When you look at how little that we still have achieved, how does that make you feel? Yeah, it, it's, it's um, still worrying. You know, especially, I mean, in a nation where the majority are unskilled, it's, it's worrying. But you've got to understand it, Siki. I think people can't understand. There used to be a time when I was the only one. But today, I can walk into a room full of black women, chartered accountants. I can't explain to you how that makes me feel. That, yes, we still have a long way to go, but we've come a long way, you know. And, and so we've got to celebrate the successes because they are, they are the ones that encourage us yeah. that there will be a multiplier effect. You know, when we look in another five years' time, you know, and, and we're starting to see that multiplier effect yeah. because more and more numbers now um, are being channeled out in terms of the pipeline. But we cannot relax as a nation when the majority of our people are, are still unskilled. How did Gobodo Incorporated actually start? How did that come about? It was, uh, so I decided to go into business. People are saying you're crazy. How can you even think that would compete with the big four in a small town, Amtata? But I say, uh, it was like, this is the time now for me to pursue my dream. So I started this small entrepreneur in, the, in that city um, doing, you know, fortunately because of, of Transkai, soon I was able to convince government to give me work. So I was able to grow, you know, into two partners and 30 staff when I started as myself and the PA. So you've achieved this. You know, I always, when I, I reach a certain stance in terms of my life, I, I dream the next dream. It was after 1994, things were open. I thought, I mean, we have to seize this moment uh, as, as, as black accountants yeah. uh, and start to think bigger. So I convinced my colleagues, guys, we need to now move towards uh, medium-sized black accounting yeah. firms. And it took time to convince them, you know, they were comfortable uh, as managers in the big four. Why would they take this risk? This woman is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it took about eight months or so to convince them, and eventually they saw it. So, um, so Coboto Incorporated was, was formed with 10 of us. And we opened an office in Johannesburg and offices elsewhere. And again, you know, this thing of dreaming is so beautiful, Siggy, because you, I, 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 we had offices in Parktown uh, Empire, mm. our first offices. So we, we established the office and we open it and I walk into my boardroom and I'm saying, you were only a dream and now I'm living it. You mm. know, those are the, the, the special moments uh, in your life that you will never forget when you see a dream actually crystallized and Lovely. living. Wow. And running it, um, getting clients, back in those early days, there, were, there was a lot of change. So it's political change. It's change in where we live, where we are allowed to now open offices and so on. Was it easy to convince people to come your way? This is different from the former trans guy. It took a long time for me to have the courage. As, as much as, as entrepreneurs, People think that it's, these things are easy for us. I mean, we, we, we just do these things in spite of our fear. So fortunately, I was on this program uh, that was uh, sponsored by Investec, and we went to New York. Um, so it was a Mary Lynch Investec program. You know, when I was working the streets of New York, I thought, there's nothing I can't do. If I'm here now, today, I, I promise you, I came back, I found those guys who were sort of, no, no, like we're thinking about it. And I said, guys, we have to move, mm. you know. So there was a new energy now to this thing. And, 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 uh, but it's all about, you know, life is all about timing. So here's this wonderful uh, woman called Stella Sitzau, who has this dream that was, came before its time to open the state-owned companies to us. And he said, she called us and said, guys, Here's Transnet. If you can all come together, I would give you a portion of Transnet. 
we had been knocking on those doors. Remember, they were totally closed. We actually had what we called um, APF Practitioners Forum, where we came together as black practitioners uh, to market together and plan, you know, these things. And those doors were closed to us. Those are generally closed to us. And then suddenly this door, as I was thinking about going big, this door opens. So our first biz client in Johannesburg was Transmed. And so you could at least build from that yes. kind of base. And when that happened, I think um, more and more people then realized, even other state-owned companies started to open the, their doors to us and the Auto General, who never gave us work, uh, realized that they can't hide anymore. Mm. And, and those doors started to open. Because here's the assumption, right, is you're black-owned, so naturally government is just going to flock to you. Um, and that's the perception that people have. And you're saying you've had to work hard to open those doors. No, very hard, and, and, and with, with perseverance and, and, and patience. Because remember, when you're a black professional, there's always this suspicion that you can't do it. You, you don't have capacity. I mean, you wrote the same exams, uh, you know, but suddenly now, because you're black, you can't do it. So we have to sort of work through these uh, suspicions and, and convince people, how would you know until you give us the opportunity? Mm. And, and it was very important those days that whatever opportunity you get, you needed to perform very well yeah. um, because otherwise then these doors would be closed. So it has been a very difficult journey. I don't think it's easier today, yeah. um, but we just have to keep persevering as, as black professionals and, and, and prove to everyone that we are not different.